and we will add that to our long list of things that we will do and fix up when we get back into government very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jan Speaker. Finetti. Mr Speaker, I am delighted to be the final speaker here in the third reading of the Education, Tertiary Education and Other Matters Amendment Bill. And like my colleague Jamie Strange, I've been waiting a long time to have my, my chance to speak. And I congratulate you finally there, Jamie, on in finally getting through on the third time through that speech. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the select committees in this, what they've done in this uh, bill and getting it to this stage, getting it to the third reading, because even though we've heard very little from our opposition benches, uh, we've heard a lot about it being a government bill, but actually this bill is so much stronger because we have made this bill so much better. We have made this bill so much better through the select committee process because we've removed the original proposal to insert a principle of equal funding treatment of public and private providers into the Education Act. This today is a good move for quality public education in this country. It's a great <coughs> move because we're seeing it in the tertiary sector. So we are saying that quality public education goes right from birth, right through a, a learner's life. And it's exciting that we've done that. So while we hear that this is a, a previous government bill, this bill is fantastic. I'm delighted to be here and speaking about it. I'm delighted that we're having the opportunity to put this bill through in the strongest form that it possibly could be. I'm really also disappointed, though, that we haven't heard a lot in the House from the opposition on this bill. It makes me wonder how much, and I've heard this time and time again on any of the education bills that have come up, how much they actually put in store to education. Now, Mr Speaker, I would actually argue with them that they are letting their public and their voters down by not having a say in the House on these bills. Mr Speaker, I have been contacted by a number of people who have been watching these debates, contacted about how they have really appreciated the understanding of what this bill actually entails. One of the areas that they have spoken to me about is the part of this bill that talks about our, international, our protection of our international students in the secondary school. This is an incredibly important part of this bill. This shouldn't be minimised, and the fact that we've got people laughing in the House does tell me that those people aren't putting any value in our education system. This is really, really important. Really, really important. What a shame that they could not articulate that so that the people of New Zealand could actually understand it. This bill allows schools or, to... Order, order. I've, I've asked me to resume a seat. I, I know there's been a certain amount of celebration going on, but it is getting too noisy now. Jan Tanetti. Thank you, Mr Speaker. This bill allows schools to more effectively manage our international students. It allows schools to manage the misconduct and also put a great deal of care and, and thought into the pastoral care of those students. And it is really, really important that schools maintain responsibility for the international students outside of school. We've got to ensure that it's not just about the discipline of those students, though, in the school setting when they get into a situation where they misbehave. This bill, with, through its um, outlining and defining the enrolment contract, enables schools to remove students from the school setting, even if they haven't misbehaved uh, when they've been at the school, it allows schools to actually deal with them if they've not disclosed issues that they have had before they have enrolled in the school. This is a really good move because it protects schools and it also protects students so that they don't get into a situation that they can't handle. This is really, really important to the schools, and it's those people who have contacted me and said how much they appreciate hearing this debate in the House, because they have since then seen that we are putting a great deal of value in our international students. 
schools have got into trouble, and this is where this bill came into, um, into being in the first place, because they were using the original code of conduct as their guidance to help them with the discipline of international students. And unfortunately, that was not enough and was tested through court processes and put both the schools and the students in a very unsafe position. So this outlining of the enrolment contract now actually helps that situation, Mr Speaker. And we know that the, for those schools, um, for all those schools that have the international students, that this is a much better situation for them to be in. Um, it keeps the schools safe. It's also great for the uh, New Zealand economy. It gives it surety. It gives those people that are wanting to send their children, their students, to New Zealand to study, it gives them surety that their children and their, the students coming over here will be safe. And so they've got more sense that they will put um, those children into this country, meaning more into our economy. Uh, also in this bill, there was the, um, a really strong part of this bill, there's lots of different parts to it, but a very, very strong part was about the, offence, uh, the offences around the provisions for falsely awarding credits towards a qualification. This was really important to our tertiary sector because it puts trust in the tertiary sector. And I'm linking this back to the international education. We even heard tonight, Mr Speaker, in, or earlier this evening, in Mr Joyce's valedictory speech about how important the international sector and the international education is to our economy. The, um, the over $1 billion that that particular sector puts back into our economy is incredibly important. We've had cases in this country where there hasn't always been able to trust the qualifications that have come from some institutions, thankfully not very many. But this bill actually puts things in place now that will strengthen the provisions in the Act so that our overseas people, again, will have uh, far greater trust in those qualifications and will appreciate the fact that the New Zealand education system is strong, as I've said, right from early childhood right through to tertiary and can be completely trusted upon. The increase in penalties will be from $10,000 to $50,000 as it will be a strong deterrent towards any institution, private, public or private, about um, putting these, these uh, qualifications and, and falsifying these qualifications. So I'm really grateful for that part of the of the uh, the bill that we've got there. And I think that again, I've been contacted by a number of institutions around this. Recently, I was contacted also by a local Wananga in the Bay of Plenty from um, just just to say, or well, they didn't contact me actually, they were at a meeting and they just said to me, <coughs> really um, appreciative of the part of this bill when they've been reading it, of allowing a wānanga to apply to use a protected term such as university. They felt that that was a really good idea. They felt that, uh, Mr Speaker, that, that it again highlights uh, the fact that overseas people that they're trying to attract into their wānanga don't understand that term wānanga and that their courses that they are putting in place are, if they're deemed to be equivalent, like a bachelor's degree or a postgraduate degree, then they should be able to apply to use the term such as university. I'm very pleased when we're reading that part of the bill too that you can actually see from there that it's not just a matter to, of them to say, I want to use the term university, that they can actually then go to the minister and it will go through a whole lot of different tests to make sure that that's OK. So, Mr Speaker, in conclusion, I believe that this bill is really important. I believe that uh, the, the most important part for me is around the, the fact that the international education parts of this bill are really, really strong. But I also believe that this is a great day, that we're about to pass this bill now, and I believe that this shows that quality public education is incredibly strong in this country, and I am very, very proud to commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. 
To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. Education, Tertiary Education and Other Matters Amendment Bill, third reading. I call on Government Order of the Day number five. Land Transport Management, 